All right. So uh, uh, welcome. And um, we're going to continue on chapter 10. Uh, we had uh, some homework uh, to do kind of a simulation between different kinds of forecasts on the TV, on the TV, on the TV ads and the uh, and the TV advertising. Okay, so uh, uh, Federica, you have the you have the, the the mic. You have the mic. <laughs> Let's have a look at it. Okay, so this is my yard. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so we first go uh, do a step back just to focus on where are we. Okay, we load the packages, Fedivert and FTP3. Uh, and so we were talking about insurances. Okay, so we had uh, um, this data set, which uh, provides value for quotes. So number of quotes uh, and number of uh, TV adverts. So basically um, insurances, uh, pay for advertisements uh, to whether to see if they quotes uh, on increase or they increase with 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 this um, with these advertisements. So the first uh, uh, visualization that we we saw was about. Uh, looking at the trend of quotes and uh, compared to the trend of the TV adverts. So we can we have spent some time talking about those things. Now we focus on, uh, as we said, on prediction, setting a certain le different level of uh, advertisement, TV advertisements, uh, and see if we are within the confident intervals, or we go out of the confident intervals of a certain level of uh, advertisement. Um, so this is the model that we used. Uh, so we shift uh, the quotes of uh, a couple of lines, three lines, so in a way that we, um, uh, so basically start from um, four, um at at uh, period four okay uh, and then we apply the model uh, with different lags to see uh, which one is the best and then um uh, to basically we apply a rima uh with just the adverse we apply a rima with the adverse and the lag so the differencing uh, uh, within periods, and then so increasing um, complexity of the model. Uh, and so then we add a quick glance uh, at the result, uh, and we see which, and we sh um, choose one of these um, uh, models. Uh, and uh, the one which is the most appropriate, basically. So we choose the, the second model, okay, which is uh, this one here, lag one, okay. Uh, and so we fit again the model on the data set just with this model, just with this only one model. And so we call it, uh, we name this, uh, as a fit best. Uh, here, um, I had a quick glance at the sigma value, uh, which is uh, no point twenty two. About so to look at the the variation, uh, but you can find it here as well. The same the same thing. Uh, and so this is what the model we are working uh, with. Uh, we have uh, already said that we had some estimations about increasing advancement will increase the number of quotes. What we are going to do, uh, and, and, 
again, we did it. So we assign new data um, uh, with a certain level of advancement. So we focus on 20 months period. This new data uh, insurance set the uh, time uh, series on 20 um, months, uh, year months period. And then we set the TV advertisement uh, to eight as a level. Okay, if we do eight advertisements uh, uh, within 20 year months period, and then we see what, what's happened. Uh, when we forecast, this is insurance future, so new data. And so we use the fit best to forecast. Uh, so we forecast the model that we choose, uh, that we have chosen uh, with uh, uh, this new data. And then uh, I also uh, add the confidence intervals. So we can see this is the model, this is the year months period. So we have the quotes. They are uh, uh, in on, on distribution. So this is the uh, mean value of this uh, quote, uh, and this is the variation. Then we have the estimates and the TV advertisement that we have set all of them to eight. So for, for, for each period, we, we do eight advertisements. And so we have the confidence interval for the 80% level and 95% level. So now I, I did a bit of manipulation. I'm sure that uh, there is another way, but let's let's uh, assume that we start from scratch with base R. So uh, I um, got a read uh, of uh, this uh, like brackets and uh, co uh, colon, a comma, and this other value here. So in a way that I've got clean um, confidence intervals, uh, which I call them conf down, conf up, conf down two, a conf up two for the 95%. So this is our new data set. Now, um, uh, I add the insurance because I need the quotes, because now here, the quotes are um, to evidence the distribution, okay? Why in our insurance uh, data set, we had the quotes, so 12, about 12 quotes, 15 quotes, and so on and so forth. So to have this uh, uh, column uh, vector, uh, which are our observed data, I add the, uh, the, the, the previous, so what's happened uh, before um, uh, May 2005, basically, because our data started from uh, 2000. So the, the period that, uh, that precede this 2005 are our observed values. So now we add this value to have a, a complete sense of what's happening. Um, and so this is our new uh, data set. So it starts actually at, uh, from 2002, January 2002. So here we don't have anything because uh, it's uh, starting at in, in 2005. Uh, some info the information started in 2005. Why we have uh, here just the quotes, okay, that we want. And so that now we can plot it. So first things that we do, is okay, this is our observed values. Then we add a geom ribbon for the confidence intervals. 
based on level eight. So this is what uh, um, we did it, basically the, the, the last uh, visualization huh? that was bluish. Uh, now I, I changed the color just to show. And then uh, we add our estimations, okay? So if we do that, you see, this is exactly the same um, uh, visualization. In fact, we did it with auto plot, no? Okay, so we did it like this, auto plot. Uh, and this was, uh, is, is what it was, no? Okay, so now I replicated the same thing, but with ggplot. And I did this, uh, to add the other levels uh, on top of this thing. Okay, so these are our, uh, our new data. Again, stick on 20 months. And if I, I, I did a try first with um, a sample that ranges uh, from seven to uh, 10, um, in a way that, so these are the number of uh, advancements that we do, not, not only one single value, not only eight, but I sample them ranging from seven to 10, uh, and then applied this sample instead of having, having just one number. Um, I use the, uh, the sample, so it varies. In fact, if we use just the auto plot, okay, to see now the forecast changes. Okay, it's a bit obviously varying, okay, because we change the, the um, this is random. So there is no, I didn't set any criteria for uh, some uh, 10 advertisement more than seven on, on some months or other months. So this is just uh, automatically selected like that. But we can see that it might uh, be different. So it's somehow following what was preceding. But uh, what we want, okay, starting from these observed values, is to have uh, um, uh, prediction lines uh, fix it. This is level eight, that now we want level seven, level nine, level 10, on top of these confidence intervals, okay? So here there's a, a little manipulation because um, um, just to simulate a four, okay? This can be automated with a four, uh, et cetera, but uh, in practice, this, what the four does, it's building up uh, this data set. So basically this insurance future that we did before for number eight, I have now replicated for seven, nine, and 10 as well. Then I fit all of them and then uh, forecast it separately. Okay, they are separate. Then, uh, um, this uh, fit, if I select just some columns, becomes a data set, a data frame, sorry. So then I can manipulate. And so I renamed uh, some things to have the reference, eight, nine, uh, and 10. Okay. Uh, and then put everything into uh, a new data frame with some left join, okay? So I start from seven, then I add eight, nine, and 10. Uh, then I uh, make it, made it longer in a way to, to have the adverts like this. Okay.
Okay, so we can see that I, I haven't run all the, all the things. This might be, this is, can be simplified, but then you don't realize what actually happens. So you can do easily with a four and then link all the things together. Got stuck. Okay. I don't know what's happening here. I have a quick restart. Okay. Which is very fast, eh? uh, considering that I made visualization and modelings, everything around it. Okay, so we run this remaining part. And then we build our new uh, data frame that we are going to be using in the, the visualization. And so we still have the months starting from 2005. So when we do the visualization, we need to add the, the observed values. Okay, then uh, the advancements uh, are uh, listed by advancements. And then advancement eight, nine, and 10. These are the numbers. Uh, these are the people longer, no? Okay, so the name of the mean and the estimations basically. Okay, as well as the quotes, the quotes are all, all here for each one of them. And so we make the plot with the ribbon as before, is uh, exactly the same, but then uh, we had the lines on top of the visualization. Okay, and so you can see Can you see the, the zoom, the, um, uh, the plot that I pulled up, the, the zoom? Yeah? Okay. So here we see that our observed data are this one here. This middle line in, in the middle within of the confident interval is our starting point. So we started with eight. And then we have uh, uh, seven, nine, and 10. And so you can see that 10 goes outside the range. We, if we do 10 advancement, it goes outside the range of eight. Yeah. So we have a base of eight advancements, so we can stay within nine and seven. And so we are within the, the range. If we do 10, we go out. Is that what you want? Yeah. Yeah, but very nice. Very nice uh, 
uh, you know, uh, uh, investigation <laughs> about the different levels and the use of the conf uh, internal confidence. I had a different approach though, okay? So I, ca I, I can show you what, what I did and then you know you can compare. Yeah. Um, Stop sharing. Okay, so let me go here. Okay, you should see my screen, right? Okay, so more or less we started in, in the same, you know, in, with the same scripts, right? The insurance, the fitting, uh, forecasting, etc. But I took a different approach and I said, okay, what I'm going to do is because I'm going to present this to top, top management, okay? And I want them to visualize what is the percentage of change, okay, which is which is a proxy for the return, right? If we increase our advertising units, multi advertising units in a range from six to 10, okay? Mm -hmm. Taking from the eight, taking two down, one down, one up and two up, all right? Mm -hmm. So what I did was, uh, what you did with the, you know, with the iteration of the <laughs> of the different the different advertising units, what, what I did was a function, okay? And this is the function to get the forecast quotes, okay? That mean that I'm interested, which is the expected value of what you know we 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 calculate from the input, which is the advertising, right? Uh -huh. Okay. So uh, this is the function that when I apply it. Okay, it's going to return uh, the 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 TV ads based on the quotes. So this function, what it does is that I enter the period, right, period twenty, but then I change the TV advertising and I change to six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, and I run that function. As a matter of fact, I could run it with map. <laughs> now, now that I, you know, I'm seeing this, I could have run it with map and then give a list. Of the numbers, so it will be less, you know, clutter, clutter. But that's for another, you know, uh, episode. So what happens is that then I have different quotes, and I'm going to center on the mean. Okay, I'm not going to be dealing with one with the confidence intervals, because I want to see the progression of if I change from six to seven, what is the change in percentage from the forecast of six and the forecast of seven in quotes, all right? So this is these are the numbers. I uh, I, I took a, a liberty here on, uh, let me see, where is it? Uh, okay, here we go. Okay, so this is the chart that, that I created. I took the liberty of using, uh, you know, using our Caria uh, tool, Excel. Okay, because it's easier in Excel, it's much easier to have a dual, dual scales. Okay, so this is the graph that I'm going to present to top management. Okay, so this is the story about, about the, the advertising and the quotes. At the bottom, you're going to see the TV advertising monthly units, right? Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. To the left on the scale, that's going to be paired with those bar plots. Okay, so for example, for six, we expect uh, to have a number of quotes from those monthly units of 10.5, which is the forecast, the mean forecast, the expected value. Then for 7.12, for 8.13, for 9, 4.7, and for 10, 16. So you see that there's an increment, right? There's a slow increment as we are, you know, incrementing on the uh, monthly units we're seeing an increment in the forecast, and that's expected. Now, here becomes the percentage of change, and that's this is the, the, the most important thing. If we, if we increase our advertising monthly units from six to seven, okay, our numbers on the quotes are going to reflect a 14% change. And you can you know, calculate that from the difference between 10.5 and 12 divided by the base, which is six, okay? That's how you get the, that percentage, which is the same that we do with the differencing. It's the same operation, okay? 
you know, we take the previous value, right? We subtract it and then we divide it by the base, okay? By the by, by the value that you want to, you know, you are uh, studying, okay? So what happens is that even though we are incrementing our uh, quotes, the percentage change between each of the units is totally different, okay? For, so for example, from six to seven, we have a 14% uh, uh, change, which is a proxy of the return that we're going to receive from those advertising monthly units. But from 12 to 13, there's only 8%. In other words, there's a decrease of the return that I'm going to receive if I invest from seven to eight monthly units and so forth, okay? So here's the gist. If we are at six right now, okay? If we are at six right now, the conclusion is that you should increase your monthly units, okay, to seven, and you are going to get an expected 14% return on that investment. So let's see, now we have to, you know, play with the numbers, right? And we have to assume, let's say that it costs a million dollars, okay? Or a million euros, <laughs> if you are in Europe, a million euros of, of one, one unit of TV advertising, which is not you know, unheard of. You know, TV advertising, it costs, you know, costs a lot of money. So if we invest $1 million more from six to seven, we can expect a return of 14% of the quotes that impact those million dollars. We need to get the revenue that we derive from the quotes, okay? To then, you know, get our equation, right? Because it, ha it has to be costed by the quotes and by the, by the units, okay? But at least there's going to be a 14% increase in the quotes, depending on the revenue that we get from the quotes. Let's say that a quote represents in the total life of the customer, because maybe we're, we're, uh, we're selling life insurance, okay? So the total life, the average total life that we get from an insurance is, let's say, 200,000 uh, euros, okay? A fifth of the million that we invested. If we get more quotes, that means that we're going to get more uh, revenue. And that 40% signifies that we're going to get more or less that amount from our investment, okay? This is... A, a, a tool, you know, to let management decide what kind of decision they want to make, okay? We're not going to be making that decision, okay? We're going to present the data, okay, this is what we expect, and this is, if you proceed this way, this is what, you know, the return is, is going to be, okay? So from six to seven, you get a 14% return. If you go from eight, if you're in eight to nine, you are expected to get a 13% uh, change. Of it, which is a proxy for the, for the return, okay? So in those scenarios, you are getting more than what you are investing. From seven to eight and nine to 10, you're getting less, okay? Percentage change. You're still getting a little bit more, but the percentage change is less, all right? So that's how, you know, I I approach this uh, this situation, okay? It will be interesting to do the map you know, for the from the other side, do the map, okay, or that function, I, the iterative function, and then try to do this plot. I I didn't have the time, okay. That's what I, I I took the shortcut in Excel, but to do this plot, you know, using ggplot, it's not that easy, okay, because you have dual uh, scales, you know, one to the left and one to the right, but 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 it can be done. I know it can be done. Okay. Yeah. What uh, what what do you think? Yeah, yeah, that that. <laughs> Convincing, Absolutely. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 it's it's a fascinating, fascinating, uh, you know, topic. But right. another, 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 but it's good because, for example, in your case, you know, you are dealing more about the confidence intervals. You want to stay within the original forecast, and that's perfectly fine. Okay, but if you're going to present this to a decision maker in terms of you know the owner of the business or you know top management we have to learn how to speak their language, okay? And their language is return on investment, you know, how I go, what percentage I'm going to increase revenue, what percentage I'm going to reduce costs, 
that's how they how they live <laughs> you know that, that 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 that's their that that's their fr framework there yeah. so we have to make sure that our story uh connects okay connects with that you know mentality because eventually they're going to say okay you know that sounds terrific you know you have done the forecast you have done this uh what what, what is it you know what what what's in it for me okay I, I'm, am i going to increase sales i'm going to reduce costs uh you know what how i'm going i'm going to proceed with this and you have to make it easy okay for example i wouldn't enter in a, in a management uh set setting i wouldn't enter into the details of arima confidence intervals forget that <laughs> you know you're, you're going to lose them okay if they don't know anything anything about statistics or anything you're going to lose them okay so i present this okay i present this and i say okay based on our forecast Okay, and we have the data. Based on our forecast, we believe that if you increase your uh, monthly units from six to seven, you should get a change in the quotes, number of quotes of 14%, that it means that eventually you are going to get a rate of investment. Maybe it's less, maybe it's more. I don't know because I don't know how, many, how, how, how much revenue you are going to get from the cost. But if I know that, then I can give, uh, I can give a number. And then they say, okay, let's do it. <laughs> you know, let, let's proceed. And of course, this is not the end of the story. Okay. This is what you expect. You have to see in the next month how the data comes. Okay. And, and then make, make the necessary adjustments. Imagine if this happened. Imagine if this happened right before COVID. <laughs> okay. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. In other words, you know, you are going to you have to revise everything. Okay. So this is not the end of the story. This is just, you know, a continuous, a point, a, a point in time. A point in time that with the data that we have, we can make, you know, confidently we can make this recommendation. But the next month, you know, the world could change. Okay. So we have to change. <laughs> to change. That's what is important that in forecasting, you have to make sure that you have a lot of assumptions here. Okay, in terms of you know that we we expect that inflation is going to be at two percent, we expect that the macroeconomy is going to be in this shape, that there's going to be another you know disaster you know waiting out there, etc. Oh yeah, you, know, you have to you have to see why okay, and and you know what CYA means, <laughs> okay, yeah, but uh yeah, but you know talking about the people that make the decisions in in a business, uh you have to talk their 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 language. Okay, rate of investment, increase percent increase sales, percent in, in cost reduction. That's how they that, that that that's how they click. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. Um, I'd like to show you one more thing. Sure. Just a second. Oh, yeah. uh, so we said that uh we might want to I'm I'm not sure how to uh your screen mm -hmm. share is loading. Okay, can you see now? So, uh, okay, we said that may, we might want it to build up a uh, heat map, okay, mm -hmm. with the yeah. that, yeah. That's not exactly what I wanted, but sure. more or less it gives, a, gives an idea mm -hmm. uh, because they, it, it's, not, it's not very, uh, you know. But anyway, I build a, ma oops, <laughs> okay. I build the matrix. Uh -huh. Okay, and then use this matrix inside this nice, very nice uh, mm -hmm. uh, package. Yep. It maply, uh, and so I put the what is it? Okay, so just put the mat the matrix inside it maply, mm -hmm. and I obtain this. So as you can see it, maybe if I open. It. Okay. Do you see it? I think so, yeah. Okay. So this is not, not uh, just to give you an idea. So um, this is the estimation value for 10 investment, the estimation value for nine, for mm -hmm. eight, and for seven. Right. These are the quotes distributions, how they are like to each other. Okay. Uh, 
and this is the um, year months uh, period. So I put it this way, which is not necessarily right. Mm -hmm. But so we can see, for example, that um, as soon as you do investments, even if you do it like 10, uh, let, let's say that we stick on the first, um, uh, like in 2005, okay, so we have May, June, July, August, let's say three months. Within the first three months, we can uh, see that there is a, a little increase. So, and then it starts decreasing to the, uh, so, uh, start, uh, this, um, um, this level here, this legend, uh, this color bar, uh, are the quotes. So we have six, uh, 12 to 16 quotes. And so if we uh, use 10 advertisements, uh, it's more, obviously, we increase, mm -hmm. okay, the number of right. quotes. Different if we do the list, so it's like seven, that we got, we so basically, it uh, the the simple um, this this heat map shows something that we expected. So mm -hmm. the more you increase advertisements, the more it are the number the, the highest are the number of quotes that you receive. Right. This bit here is even interesting. So these are the distributions of the quotes which you can see that in the very one, two, three, four months, there is a quite a variety of happenings in here. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. so uh, things may slightly change, but then they stabilize within the, the period, if you, if you stick on <clears throat> the numbers of investments. But, right. yeah, okay, but, uh, what if I uh, use this option seriate all or which is op optimal lift ordering? You see that um, it's even more uh, clear. This is our percentages mm -hmm. uh, of the, the estimations. So we can see that. Um, um, within the uh, so we reach the top hundred uh, percent at the end of the period. Even if we they they are consistent with the numbers. So if we are cons consistent with the, I don't know if this is necessary. Mm -hmm. This one. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh. uh probably. You know, I, I, I will, I will, I would, uh, I would show it in a different way. Okay. In yeah. terms of, you know, trying to remember the, the bar plot that I, uh, that I created, that it had a, co a connection between the advertising units and the forecast. Okay. That you could see clearly. Okay. Uh, each of, each of the advertising number of units and then, you know, what we expect on the number of quotes. So you could do a matrix. Okay, based on those numbers, a matrix, and then inside the box, okay, where they intersect, you could put, you could put the number of the, the revenue, the revenue expected by uh, the number of quotes. Okay, and that will clearly show, that will clearly show, right, that as you increase, right, as you increase your, uh, your units, there's going to be an increase in quotes, but then the colors, depending on what you put there, maybe the revenue or maybe the, the percentage of change, the colors are going to give you more or less an indication that this is the, this is the region where I, I, I should be, you know, uh, making, making a, a decision, a, an optimal, an optimal decision. Okay, so I, I will kind of reconfigure it, okay, using the heat map, but not as the, you know, as the gradient in terms of the numbers, right? The numbers of quotes or the numbers of, of units is just in the intersection 
there's going to be a number that ties them both. And it could be the percent of change, it could be revenue, et cetera, okay? Or a, a revenue as percentage of, okay? So once that number you know, gets a little bit high, then the color would change, right? For example, uh, according to the Microsoft, I think it's called Microsoft Fluid. Uh, there is a, you know, there's a theory on how to use colors, et cetera. And usually what they recommend for money, for business, is to use three colors, okay? Uh, green, uh, yellow, and red, right? Okay, so green is, that's where we want to be, right? Yellow is warning, and red is danger. <laughs> In other words, the red, you don't want to be there, okay? Because you're going you are going the other way. So yellow and green are the regions that, you know, you're, you're optimizing, you're doing, you're doing a, a good decision, okay? So, you know, put, put it in that way. So they can see when you speak, they can see exactly, you know, what the message, you know, you want to try to convey, all right? Uh, this is, you know, this is improvement. This is improving. You know, you have to, you know, uh, work with different things, and then you say, okay, I can explain that one. I can explain, you know, very well. You know that I understand it very well. Maybe other visualizations you can do, but they are kind of fuzzy. They don't, you know, that they, they, they don't give you a clear message. So, okay, you know, we 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 will put it in the stove. Okay. All right. So uh, we have around fifteen minutes. So let's start with <laughs> let's start with this uh with chapter 11 <laughs> okay which is an interesting chapter because uh usually that's how that's how forecasts are done for you know for uh complex businesses okay for example retail stores etc so let's see how what what do we have here okay can can you can you see my screen right Okay, so chapter 11, uh, the title is Forecasting Hierarchical and Group Time Series. So in the learning objectives, uh, we have to explain or give some examples of what we mean by hierarchical and group time series. And that, that's going to be the next slide. Then there's something called single level approaches, okay, in terms of how do we do the reconciliation? And you'll see why it's important uh, to um, uh, you know, analyze uh, different approaches for reconciling all this forecast that you are, you know, you, that you are creating. Uh, then there's a there's a forecast reconciliation. Uh, we're going to be dealing with two uh, data sets: uh, the Australian domestic tourism, and the there's another data set on the uh, prison uh, population in Australia. Uh, then we're going to reconcile distributional forecasts and forecast the Australian pr prison population. So those are the two data sets that we're going to be working on. Okay, so what do we mean by hierarchical? Well, the best way is to, you know, have an illustration, right? Okay. So uh, when we talk about hierarchical is that our data is structured in a hierarchical way, all right? So let's take the example of the Australian uh, tourism, tourism uh, data set. Well, you have different variables that give you different levels, okay, of the movement of people around Australia uh, in, you know, uh, hotels, uh, bed and breakfast, you know, uh, businesses uh, related to tourism. In other words, you know, is you're not going to your home. You're going to stay in, you know, uh, so some place to have a vacation or a business uh, meeting or whatever. Okay. So we can split that data into different levels. The first level is going to be the whole country, right? Australia. That's going to be the first level. Okay, the national level. Then there's a variable called state, right? So Australia, I believe, it has eight states or territories okay they don't make that 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 much difference that they have in the same level so we have eight states and there's some data within each of those you know uh, uh states or, or territories then you have regions okay which is the 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 the, the next level 
uh, besides states, okay? And then also you have another level, which is purpose. And therefore, uh, you have business, you have a leisure, uh, you have holiday, uh, visiting, and, uh, uh, and another. So you have four uh, there. So that's another level, you know, that you can segregate that data. And that's basically what hierarchical uh, time series are. In other words, you have some data that depending on the level, you're going to have different aggregations, okay? So for example, at the national level, you are going to have a time series, right? On the aggregate, based on the period that we're studying, okay? You, you're going to have the aggregate of all the trips that the people are making within that period. Then when we go to the state, you're going to have eight, okay? So there are going to be eight time series that are going to give you the landscape, right? Or the variation of each of those visits within state and the same with region and the same with uh, purpose, okay? Okay, so in terms of also, remember that uh, they're group uh, time series, right? So in group time series, maybe we have two, uh, you know, hierarchy, her hierarchies that they don't, you know, they don't have, you know, that much relation in common. Or maybe you have a hierarchy and then you have some components that cross over, you know, that structure, okay? And we're going to see that in the, in the, in the prison. Uh, a data set, okay? So you have a mix of hierarchy and also group group uh, time series, which adds then, you know, to the complexity of this, uh, of the, you know, of, 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 of the forecast, okay? So in this chapter, we're going to be dealing with that. We're going to be dealing with hierarchical time series and also with group time series, okay? So in the, um, Australian tourism, as I said, Australia is divided into six states and two territories. That's the same level. That's what I say, eight, right? And each one has its own, you know, uh, idiosyncrasy, uh, complexity, et cetera, you know, patterns, et cetera. Then for each state, we have, they have divided those states into regions, okay? For a total of 76 regions. So we have national, we have state and we have regions. And of course, uh, we said also that we have one that kind of crossovers also, which is the type of uh, of uh, of uh, movement. You know, what, what is causing the purpose? What is causing that movement? Okay. So in the book, uh, they start just, you know, uh, doing some recoding on the, you know, on the, on the states, right? Instead of, you know, doing the abbreviation of the states. And then they introduce a function called aggregate key. So what they're doing in the in this library, I, I believe is Fable, the Fable library. What they're doing is that the aggregate key is going to create those hierarchies in the time series. So when you use the aggregate key, then you are uh, uh, internally with the same function. You're internally codifying that that hierarchy okay depending on how you use it so for example in this in this one they did it by the state and by the region because those are the next levels right you know we don't have really a, a national region it's just the aggregation of all the, the information but the state and the regions are the ones that have the that information so we're going to use the aggregate key right and we're going to you know total those trips by state and by region and we're going then to create a table called Tourism uh, Hierarchical Time Series, okay? And that's the one that we're going to be using for our, our model, all right? Now, as we have seen in previous chapters, one of the first things that you have to do in time series is to visualize them, okay? To see more or less, you know, what are the patterns? Are they stationary, non-stationary? They have trends, they have seasonality and so forth. So now that we have created that tourism HTS with the aggregate key, now we can plot each of the uh, of the regions or, or the states, excuse me, or the states, and check it out that here you have something called aggregating. That's the aggregation from all those states. So the aggregate is really the the top level, 
you know, the national, the national level. As you can see, there are different patterns depending on the state. For example, you have the Northwest Territories, this one, NT, which is kind of, you know, uh, it goes up and down, up and down, up and down, and then uh, increases a little bit at the end, okay? Others like uh, ACT, for example, the, the uh, it's a territory, I believe. Uh, let me see which one is ACT. Yeah. Well, it's, it's one of the territories, okay? There. I'm not from Australia, so I cannot <laughs> I cannot remember that well. But it's one of the territories. As you can see, it has more an irregular pattern. Okay, this one is more seasonal, right? This one is more seasonal because it, you see that pattern repeating, repeating within you know a, 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 a range of periods. Uh, here uh, you see more irregularity. Okay, so maybe there's no seasonal, but then you see a a, 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 a sizable increase, right? You know, at, at the end. Also, in the West Australian uh, state, right? The West Australian state, um, you have this pattern that kinds of stays stationary, right? Stationary, then there's a dip, and there's a say, jump, okay? Right at the at, at the end of the time series, there's a jump. So probably something happened there, right? Uh, that caused that, and we have to have to account for that because. If we don't give that information to the forecast, you know, to the forecasting models, uh, it's not going to do very well. Okay, the same thing happens with uh, COVID. Okay, during that COVID period, that you know the trend, you know, went haywire. It's not went haywire, etc. Uh, you have to give some information, and we study in chapter ten that we can add uh, external regressors, right? You know, we can add holidays. We can add flags that, you know. Uh, Take in consideration that kind of um, major happening or major disruption. Okay, uh, the author doesn't tell us, you know, <laughs> what happened in Western Australia. Apparently, something had happened in 2014. Uh, they 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 noticed the jump, right? But they don't they don't give us, you know, the information. They they kept it quiet. Okay, part of the challenge. All right. So let's continue doing some exploratory analysis. Okay, we have around three minutes. So I'm going to just finish the, this slide. Uh, and we see very interesting pattern. We chose four, um, four states here. Okay, Victoria, Tasmania, Northern Territory, and Queensland. And as you can see the patterns within the years, right? Within the years, you see that Queensland and the Northwest Territory, they have an optic between the first and second quarter. The third quarter is the apex, and then it goes down. Okay. And and, and it repeats. That pattern keeps repeating within the years. Something reverse happens with Victoria and Tasmania. And uh, if you wonder, you know, why is it happening? You have to see a map of Australia. Okay. And I think you will. You, you will understand why this is happening. This green area, okay, is Queensland. It's in the northwestern part of the, you know, the whole con uh, subcontinent, continent. And North, Northern Territories are also in that Northern, you know, middle uh, section. Victoria and Tasmania, they are at the Southern part of Australia. So what ha what's happening here? What is happening is that when, there's a cold season there, the winter season, which is our summer, okay? You know, the winter season is between June and August, September. Those are the cold months. The summer months in Australia are between December, January, February, inverse from, from the Northern Hemisphere. So what is happening is that when it gets cold here, people move, okay? They want to take their vacations or their business meetings or something in the Northern part. And the same happens reverse in the northern part. Okay, when it's summer, too hot, then they go to the cooler uh, places. And that basically, because of geography, that's basically explaining why this is happening. Okay, and it's important, you know, to to understand that. Okay, because remember that we're going to be recon reconciling this forecast. So one forecast is going to go up, one forecast is going to go down. So in the aggregation, you have to take that into consideration, okay? And there's some models, uh, you know, linear regression, et cetera, that 
take that into consideration, okay? Uh, we talk about the group time series. They could be, you know, for example, let's say that a, a company, a uh, big company, operates in Europe, but also operates in Latin America, and it operates in India. Okay, so those are three totally different markets. You cannot, you should not uh, mix them. So you can have a structure in Europe, person in Europe, another structure in Latin America, another structure in India. Okay, and you should consider that kind of independently, unless unless there is something happening between those three regions that are interconnected, and that's that could be the cross, you know, effect that you could, you know, you could you could you could experiment with that. But with the group time series, basically what we have is two or more hierarchies that they don't have, you know, that much in common. Okay. And that's where, you know, we are going to study that root and series with the Australian uh, prison population. Okay, so I'm going to stop here, uh, you know, for uh, this chapter. Uh, this chapter has a lot of mathematics. <laughs> okay, so it will be wise, okay, it will be wise to review some matrix algebra because there's a chapter that is only that, <laughs> only that. I, I, I'm not going to, you know, go into details. Uh, uh, there, but you know, uh, you know, be, be warned, be warned that there's some mathematical, you know, uh, manipulation there. That at least you know you should be you should be aware. You should you you should have some knowledge of how to you know how to deal with that. Okay. All right. So uh, we're going to stop here. Uh, let me stop the share. We're going to stop. 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 <laughs> Thank you.